Hi everyone, I'm happy to meet you once again in another Singapore math video. Today we are going to solve a, a grade 4 problem which probably is applicable for grade 5 and 6 as well. So let's go straight in. The question is, the ratio of Joshua's money to Kevin's money was 3 is to 4 at first. It's a ratio question, right? At first, Joshua's money to Kevin's money was in the ratio 3 is to 4. After Joshua gave Kevin $24, the ratio of Joshua's money to Kevin's money became 1 is to 2. So what was the total amount of money they had? See this... Uh, what we know is initially there is a ratio between Joshua and Kevin's money and Joshua is giving money to Kevin and then the ratio of Joshua's money to Kevin's money changes into 1 is to 2 but the question again is what was the total amount of money they had now even though Joshua gave money to Kevin Joshua loses some money Kevin gains some money but the total amount of money between I mean together for Joshua and Kevin, that remains the same. So that is the core concept here. Total quantity or total amount remains unchanged. So the total amount of money Joshua and Kevin had, that remains the same. There is no change in it. So that will be our um, technique that we are going to use to solve this. So let's go one by one. The ratio of Joshua's money to Kevin's money at first was 3 is to 4. So Joshua had three units, that is representing here the three here, and Kevin had four units. So that shows three is to four is represented here. Now, after Joshua gave Kevin $24, the final ratio of Joshua's money to Kevin's money became one is to two. So Joshua is one here and Kevin is two here. Now what we need to know is this here, we have like three units here and four units here. This put together, this seven units, the total size of seven units is equal to the total size of three units here. So let's rephrase it. I mean, put this in one together and put this another side, right? Let's put it this way. So now we know that initially Joshua had three units, three is to four, Kevin had four units. But finally, Joshua had one unit and Kevin had two units. But what we can see here is the total amount of this and the total amount, that remains the same, right? So if they remain the same, here we've got seven units and here we've got three units. But if we can find a way to divide them into smaller sized units of the same size for this and this because the total size is the same we should be able to come uh, be able to uh, divide them into smaller sized units right so that the unit sizes are the same one technique for that is here you have seven units here you have three units uh, we can use LCM lowest common multiple so seven here, it's the lowest common multiple for 7 and 3 is 3 times 7, 21. That's the lowest common multiple. So in this case, it would be 7 times 3 is equal to 21 units. Here, 3 times 7 is 21 units. All right. So what do we mean by times 3 here? We are going to uh, subdivide each of these units into 3 smaller sized units. So this is three, all right? We have seven here. So each of this becomes three units. So seven times three, that will become 21 units. So here we are going to divide this into three and this into three and all the rest of them into three, three, three. So totally, we will have 21 units here. So in this case, what we are going to do is 3 times 7, which means each unit we are going to divide into 7 smaller units, so we will have 21 units here. So first, we divide this into 7 smaller units and the rest into 7, 7 each. So we have 21 units here and we have 21 units each. Now, see, Joshua had some bigger, a, a slightly more here initially, 
but finally Joshua has lesser just to see what Joshua alone has let's change the color so that we can easily uh, you know identify now you it's very clear that he has lost two units here right so this total here is nine units and if you count this this will be seven units so he has lost two units because he gave away $24 so the two units that he gave away that is equal to $24 so nine unit minus seven unit that gives you two units so two units is equal to $24 so we know one unit is equal to 24 divided by 2 which is $12 so one unit here represents $12 and the question is about what was the total amount of money they had so the total amount of money they had before and after the total is the same and that is equal to 21 units of money so one unit represents $12 so 21 unit will units will represent 21 times 12 which is equal to 252 dollars i hope this was easy so the key strategy here is to find what does not change so in this case we found that the total quantity remains unchanged right so that we use that as a technique to solve this problem using model method in fact model method is quite easier for these kind of problems but still let's go ahead and check out what how we can solve the same problem using algebra when we take algebra, we'll have two different methods. Uh, let's see both of them one after the other. Method one, say we, the question is, the ratio of Joshua's money to Kevin's money was three is to four at first. After Joshua gave Kevin $24, the ratio of Joshua's money to Kevin's money became one is to two. What was the total amount of money they had? So let's start here. Let's use the same technique. The total quantity remains unchanged because that's very obvious here. So say Joshua, the ratio is 3 is to 4. So Joshua, let's say he has 3x, right? And Kevin has 4x. We know that, see, when we say the ratio is 3 is to 4, it, the actual number is a multiple of these meaning 3 times 2 and 4 times 2, or 3 times 3 and 4 times 3. It could be any of those. We don't know that. That's why we represent that with an x, 3 times x and 4 times x. That is the total um, amount of money Joshua has, and this is the total amount of money Kevin has. Now, after Joshua gave $24, the ratio of their money became 1 is to 2. So, again, uh, the unit sizes, uh, see, he's losing some money and he's now coming up with one unit. So we don't know what is the size of the unit. So we just put it as 1y and 2y. Again, the same here. These are representing multiples. So it's 1y and 2y. Or 1 is to 2. Uh, in algebra, we, it's easier to write 1y is to 2y. 1y represents the total amount of money Joshua has at the end. All right. So now, when we add these two, that is 7x. 3x plus 4x is 7x. And when we add these two, it's 3y. And we know that the total amount of money both of them have will not change. So they have to be equal. So 7x is equal to 3y. Now, I want to represent this in terms of y. So I can just rewrite this as 3y equals 7x. Now, what is y? Or 1y or y is equal to 7 divided by 3 times x. So this again, you can look at it as both sides in an equation. Uh, you can divide both sides with the same value, multiply both sides with the same value so that the equation is not affected. So if you divide here by 3, it becomes 1, 1y. One and here you divide by 3, it becomes 7 over 3 times x. Now, the difference, 3x minus 1y. What do you think is the difference here? 
because he lost or he gave away $24 and because of that now his value is uh, 1Y. The amount of money he has is 1Y. So the difference between these two should be $24. So 3X minus 1Y is equal to 24. And now we can represent this Y in terms of X because that will help us solve the value of X. Right? 3x minus 1y or y, both the same. That is equal to 7 over 3 times x. 7 over 3 times x is equal to 24. Now, this 3x is nothing but 3 over 1x. Right? It can also be written like that. Now, these are fractions. And you know, in fractions, we try to make the denominator the same so that we can do any operations on the numerators. So here in this case, again the LCM, 3 and 1, the LCM is 3. So we are going to multiply the denominator here by 3 and the numerator by 3 so that this fraction value does not get affected. So 3 times 3 is 9 and 3 times 1 is 3. 9x over 3 minus 7x over 3 equals 24. Now since the denominators are the same, we can just go ahead and subtract the numerators. 9x minus 7x divided by 3 equals 24. And we know that if we want to remove this 3 from this side, multiply both sides by 3. So this 3 gets cancelled off. So we'll result in 9x minus 7x is equal to 24 times 3. This is 2x and that is equal to 72. 24 times 3 gives us 72. And x is equal to 72 divided by 2, which gives us 36. So we have found the value of x. And the question is, what was the total amount of money they had? The total amount of money they had, I don't want to go here because I don't know the value of y yet. And I don't really have to figure that out because the total amount of money remains the same. So total amount of money with Joshua and Kevin is 4 plus 4x plus 3x, which is 7x. So let's find that. 7x is equal to um, 7 times x is 36, right? So that is equal to 252. So the amount of money that both of them had is $252. So this is the first method which is exactly the same as what we did uh, using uh, model method in instead of models we are using algebra in here now let's go to uh, another method which is called the simultaneous equations right the same question the ratio of Joshua's money to Kevin's money was 3 is to 4 at first. After Joshua gave Kevin $24, the ratio of uh, their money became 1 is to 2. What was the total amount of money they had? So now, let's start. Uh, so this technique that we're going to use is called simultaneous equations. Most of the time, you would be learning about simultaneous equations in the secondary school. All right? But if uh, to just to show how this can be done because it's quite simple, similar to what we've been doing so far. So Joshua and Kevin, right, they had money in the ratio 3 is to 4, so 3x and 4x. That is the initial amount of money they had. Then, what changed? Joshua gave away or lost $24, right? Kevin gained $24. So this is the change. Initial uh, ratio is this. The change is this. And the finally, here, this becomes 1y. And here, this becomes 2y. The ratio is 1 is to 2. And 1y and 2y are the total amount of money each of them had. So this is the final uh, ratio. Initial ratio change and the final ratio and this forms an equation here right so this can be written as two equations and we are going to solve that equation using a method called so, uh, the elimination method all right so 
you're just writing it again here, the equations 1 and 2, 3x minus 24 equals 1y, 4x plus 24 equals 2y. See, there are two ways of doing it. One is using substitution and the other is using um, elimination. In either case, in this case, the method that I'm choosing here is to make these y values same so that if I subtract these equations, y is gone and I'll be left with x and a value and I can find the value of y. Let's see how that can be done. See, 2 and 1, I want to make them same, so I'm multiplying this by 2, equation number 1 by 2, and I'm going to multiply this by 1, which means this will become 2y, and this side will also be multiplied by 2, so this equation is unchanged, right? I mean, the equality is not affected. Here, I'm going to multiply by 1, so this remains 2y, and so the rest of them as well. So this becomes 2 times 3 is 6, 6x. Six 2 times minus 24 is minus 48, and 2 times 1y is 2y. And here, it's not going to change. 4x plus 2y equals 20 is equal, to, sorry, 4x plus 24 equals 2y times 1, it's going to still remain the same. So now I'm going to subtract them. 6x minus 4x, that gives me 2x. Minus 48 minus of 24. So that would be minus 72. And that is equal to 2y minus 2y is 0. Now if I bring the 72 either to the right hand side or another way of looking at it is adding 72 to both sides of an equation. So in that case, here I'll, I'll be left with 2x minus 72 plus 72 cancels off. Here, plus 0 plus 72 becomes 72. So x is equal to 72 divided by 2, or x is equal to 36. And what is the total amount of money that we have is 7x, of course, right? 7x is equal to 7 times 36, which is equal to $252. If you look clearly, I don't even have to have done this. I could have just added these two. If I add these two, 24, 24 would have got cancelled. I would be left with 7x equals 3y, which exactly is the same what we got in the previous method. If you can rewind and check, we would have got 7x is equal to 3y. So that, from there, we can substitute the value of y in terms of x in one of these equations and solve for x. I hope this was clear. Um, I hope I did not rush. If you think that I rushed through or you know, went fast, please let me know in the comment section. Do uh, subscribe to my channel, like this video, share it with your friends, and Make sure that you click on this notification uh, bell icon so that you can receive uh, video updates every time I upload it. Have a great day, happy learning and meet you again. Bye.